on uh, Dinko and YNK. Fiend and Astralis come into play and all to play for. I mean, excited to see what Fiend can bring. They're talking about that disrespectful style. And there's no doubt Fiend are one of those teams that have definitely had the potential to continue to ignore who they are up against. And Astralis continued asked to impress us with their capacity to handle this roster change. Lucky dumping Util and Bubble dumping Bubski. Runs out of bullets and HP. Dupree with a pistol. Tech 9 on the pistol, no less. And already the top site's open for business. Good luck, have fun. Heavy man disadvantage. And they got Util for days, Chad. Why did that feel so easy? It just all the kills came in their way right there. And well, now locked out Smoke in the heaven position. And they can't even find. go mini. Yeah, this one is a rough start here for Fiend. Makes sense seeing Astralis go into a map like Nuke. I think they're just trying to hold on to their armor because uh, this one's already fallen flat for them. So uh, it all kicked off with a bang, but now we're going to slow on down. Han, the highest rated member of Fiend. I learned that from the desk, and that actually is interesting to me considering the names of experience that he's partnered up with. Yeah, I got to talk to uh, Han and Red Star on our second media day, uh, have a bit of a chat to them, and what I got from that was that uh, the, the disrespectful Counter-Strike and, and the fact that they're up against these well-known names, these big dogs, they don't seem to care, right? Everybody's here under the same circumstances and the same conditions, and they're just here to play their game. Uh, so that, that style of, of, of not caring, right, kind of goes well with the, what Bubble said about the disrespectful Counter-Strike or right, making sure they want to take these fights. Yeah, we need to be really clear. When we say disrespectful, it's a Counter-Strike disrespectful. Sure. Uh, we're, we're not typing nasty things in the chat. No, no, no. It's just like taking a lot of fights, playing heads up Counter-Strike, right, when normally players would shy away from fights. These guys want to get stuck on in. They'll force the issue. They'll do something a little bit outside the box. And we're going into round number two. It will be the force buy from them. No scout to play with towards this yard position. Just some digs and... A pesky CZ-75 as the smoke wall quickly erected towards Yard, and oh, they're going to make their way down just as fast as you like. The bomb on the back of Magisk, and he's the first one to cross here. He's going to leave that behind for his teammates because they're a bit disconnected. Yeah, and it, co it cost them four smokes, Chad. They cross smoke and three between Mini and Secret. So heavy expense oh, that's of a Util, and yeah, by Bubble. Red Star's put a deagle into him, and to hold the lobby... and. Don't fancy his chances here. Zipex has got three CTs looking to take the space away from him. The crosshair shy of the head. Victor still kicking. It's difficult for them to win this down, the round though now, right? So we already have players towards the lower site here for Astralis. They just need to get their way on in. It is an open runway right now. We can see that. They just need to get a move on. And well, as Dupree wraps around hell, he should be having a couple of kills here. The first, Wobbly. Okay, maybe I spoke too soon. Well, uh, still a tough retake. Coming in from ramp side. Lucky in a prime position. He's got right side on lock. And interesting, this looks like a conservative approach. They're actually going to just go and go for a third round supported by the Kevlar and the saved MAC-10. I think there was a second MAC-10. I'm not sure where that's fallen. Yeah, in lobby, right? No one's opted to retrieve that, but with Dupree's is equipped. It's not going to get you far up against the helmets of those Stralis members either way. Would have been nice if they could have picked that up. That means everybody from Fiend would have had an upgrade going into the next round, right? Because you can obviously drop the guns across. They already had pistols equipped. Uh, but that's not to be the case here. Now it's just making sure everybody stays alive. And Bubski, he's a bit light on HP here. Let's see just how <laughs> silly it is. Isn't it just? I, I... Manufactured. Yeah, so we are going to see the double dip of uh, this investment right here. What will be the change? Will they do something a little bit more all-in on the Bulgarian side of things? Victor keeping his head down to avoid any flashes in case of the top rush, but similar smokes towards Yard, and well, back on down he goes. And just with all the space he could possibly hope for. And now Zipex working a play over towards Ramp, but Victor in the hut here, the spicy new looking Deagle equipped on this, and they're gonna get crunched on Han. Well, ahead of the pack here, and he goes down, but the flank is what's important, and Bubsky's already dealt with that. Look at them, they're all ready for this. Four of them. Woof! As quick as you like right there. Zip, locks it down, gets the third. And now the script writers have been... Some players, as we saw from Vitality, do seem to be still thriving with the M4A4. Masuta does look just as good. Rocking that. So personal preference still playing a part into it, but the boys from Bulgaria fancy their chances. We've seen this one from Astralis. It can quick. be top pop. Tamed by Victor. Some real good suppressing shots and a time for a fresh mag as well. Stalled out here immediately. Well, the rotation has at least been forced. Red Star down in that vent trying to cover the lower control. As you can see from Lucky's position, no one has crossed just yet. And without space, Astralis are hoping to find a kill. So does anybody from Fiend start to get inquisitive or do they retool? Well, here you can see some more smokes being lined on up. 
Yeah, I found it really interesting. I asked Magisk how many variations of the smoke wall they have on Nuke, and well, you started counting, just listing off the teams they stole them from. <laughs> it's like Hellraisers, we've got Nip, we've got Blah. Yeah. I think he got to four and then lost count. It's going to be the most complex map, I think, for at least one area having so many different variations. And obviously they all achieve different things. They have different looks. But this is here to get them across towards that warehouse. And the biggest problem right now is the time. 40 seconds remaining. The 4v5 disadvantage still exists. And they are walking into the domain of that Red Star AWP. They need to get him cleanly here or this one could fall apart quickly. You see players often go for the wide swing on this, and this time he's just crouched into the line. Leads Red Star to a two-man advantage. He's accrued that. Lucky jumping straight down and actually giving a little bit of space to maneuver. So they might return to that topside bubble to check. And oh, great catch. Looking for a spotless one here on the CTs. Bubski changes the dialogue, albeit slightly. And with 10 seconds left, yeah, you are going to scarfer. Just going to try and save here. I um, want to make sure they don't go down after the time. Lucky... You fancy, bro. He's going to have a look, bro. This the Galil damage seems to be name of the game. And he does go down after time. He's got plenty of cash to splash. 5.2, and they only would have gotten one team with two newer players of Bubsky and Lucky, at least on land. In oh, okay, there you go. There's an opener. It's good to see him keep to that poise. But Red Star, the impact is being felt here. Oh, Victor completely booked. From 100 to 0, Bubsky does convert the variation again. Caught by the OBS team, an alternate wall smoke. No one's down. It will surely be acknowledged by the boys of Bulgaria. Double ramp set up. Now that's intriguing. Should not be for too long. Han can float around, and yeah, he will. So they have no info yard. That'll be a back of the minds of Astralis. There is potential for aggression. Lucky for now, holding that from the T roof. So stubborn towards the top site. Especially considering he's standing exactly where Bubble, excuse me, Victor, did just fall. 48 as a smoke is deployed. And that's the last of Fiend's resources, at least in the smoke department. As the wind whistles here at Cedar Wood Creek. 30 seconds, boys. It's going to be lucky for the Flash's top site. So they're keeping it simple. Running out that hut with a bomb on their back. It's... Good molly, really good molly. They have to stand in the open and swallow. The flashes, the wall bangs come through. Bubble trying to stand his ground. Bubsky's caught more heads. Dupree as well contributes. And that's big from Dupree. 15 seconds, the bomb's going down the vents and they suspect Dreamer's top side. They're absolutely bang on, but he is going to take one with him at the bare minimum. Not expecting this lurk. Ah, oh, and that's the end of him. Good tracking from Lucky. It didn't seem very fair for Astralis, did it? They had everything they needed to make that one. Squishy. And just after you've, you know, had yourself a little bit pantsed from that execute, you now find yourself responsible for a potential yard. Mixing it up, keeping that playbook fresh. A bit worried about the orb, so the warning shot has been fired off here, and there is a gap. Manufactured in that smoke. Bullet through has touched up Lucky. And Red Star, well, they now know it's repositioned here. So he can make a bit more space over towards Yard. The lobby push coming in. Zip, he's under pressure now. And oh, Victor can't find anything. He has to worry about multiple angles here because Dupree is locking it down as well when kills are happening elsewhere. Oh, counter bang as well. Victor lives on. They are down towards B here. There's nobody in the lower site right now to deal with this for Fiend. So being able to get some... Lower. Hans made the way on down. He's not looking the right way. The door's open. He had no idea. Blindsided by Bubsky. The bomb goes down, and I think it has to be the save again. So, not the ideal start for Fiend by any means. Five to one already. Okay. I asked Astralis how, or more in particular, how biased Bubsky, how the you know in-game leadership contrasts. Mm. Like having Glaive in the server, having Magisk in the server. And you were, question. You were bang on, by the way. You, you, when I asked you the same question, you suspected that the system was a product of, was the reason for the consistency. Mm. That's how it can look the same, even though you're changing a leader and the best leader of all time. Uh, and the answer that I got was basically that there is a lot of similarities in the system. It got a lot of credit, but also that Ma Magisk isn't as interested in the mid round. Okay. Glaive likes to micromanage mid rounds. Magisk is much more up for the... Uh, they get info or they get a kill where they could actually capitalize on it, but sometimes they don't feel the need. Yeah, whereas I'm sure Glaive would be quick to kind of try and poke a hole if he sees an advantage. Magisk is quite happy to keep to the playbook. And I mean, it helps him focus on his game as opposed to having sure. to pull all those pieces, which is, you know, something that I think comes with, with time. 
as a leader. If they can just get this AWP out of the picture here of Red Star AWP once again, to discover where it is within that mid-round, then they can just maneuver away from it. But Han up close and personal towards the ramp smoke. There is a timer on this type of a play. Yeah, Fiend could really use this. I mean, take a look at the score. It does kind of tell the whole story. T side already off to a flying start, and you've only got two players operating on that Desert Eagle. Now, Zipex so far consistent in his lobby maintenance. The wall smokes will be deployed late. And Lucky's going to be doing his top util. So that's previously been catching them off guard. They haven't felt pressured at all, have not they? Not at all. There's not a single moment, right? We've seen some teams, like, I remember Sinners, they were doing a lot of lobby aggression. They were pushing a lot of fights here. Fiend haven't been able to find anything. And, and it feels claustrophobic when we watch the Fiend POVs. It really does. Dreamer this time has vision at the bare minimum, but nothing's committing. How frustrating. Not for Victor. Takes down the entire hot push and no oh dear Zipex. Yeah, running out of options now. He's counting on Dupree to arrive from Mini Han with the push in the flank. And clean as you like. That's what Fiend needed. Not only with only three rifles, but they find it cleanly. Recover an AK or two. Put themselves back into at least a position to do more damage. String together some consecutive rounds. Yet to see that so far. Started well, right? Started with Magic's opening right there, but this time just playing behind that Molotov. Dreamer as well up in the rafters. Here, let's see if that changes the pace of how they want to approach this one. The util is good. You see that smoke that just gets thrown out? That's going to land just in front of the squeaky door. Trying to help them with the vent drop scenario. Zip might be the guy working on that with the Mac 10. Doesn't have to happen immediately here. Oh, oh. And this is a lot of space right now for free. You cheeky bean. Even spots the shoulder of Bubble. He'll wait to see if a cursory glance can be punished. They have no idea he's lower, no. right? You can see where Red Star's posted up, so they literally have no idea. If Magus continues this crawl, it's great, but the problem is he does have to make sound cues right now if he wants to advance any further. Sure, but he's so far ahead of the pack. The Wall of Smoke's now. Sure, they'll start to think about a rotate, but if they try going down the vents, that's where Magus books them. They're forcing uh, it. Hello and goodbye. Brilliant calling. Magus has essentially won the round. Now the team can join him. He's already cleared it all out. The rotator is yep. already dead. The ramp rotates the only fight he has to contend with. And I think he catches a glimpse and a frag. Oh, and Red Star tagged to 15. Magisk and Astralis bullying the boys from Fiend with this one. I think it might just be the safe has call again be. right here. Yeah, that bomb's gone down. The 40 seconds has begun. Victor and his mate Dreamer are still working on the lobby presence here. So oh, that is such a cool new ground. I, I can't believe he got so much space for free right there, right? There was a lot more uh, pressure towards the top site with that front squeaky lurk smoke coming on out. And uh, I guess that drew, drew their attention enough to open the gap. Oh, yeah. If you actually think about it, that's exactly what it does, right? The per the only person that's going to be taking early glances yard, if the AWPer is maybe taking a ramp look, is going to be Bubble in main. But what's the one thing that pulls him away from yard? It's when it could be that spray into squeaky required. Pulls him away, Magis just walks his way through Yard, a sitting duck for an AWPer, but threads the needle, finds the frag, and Bubble looking a little silly as he descends that people here. Yeah, and just keeping track of players is so impressive. I don't know how you do it. Some of the pros just have such awareness of what's lost, what's not. Well, they've got double orbs here. Han and Red Star both equipping them. Hans is over towards Ramp, Red Star towards Yard, and well, if you're ever going to convert around with opening kills, Yanko spoke about that stat line on the desk for Fiend. Double Ops is a great way to find a kill in these early stages. But again, if these smoke walls keep coming on out, it's going to make Red Star's life more than difficult. Lining them up, lobbing them out, and taking their time. Astralis, no rush. Just making sure that they're doing all the details correctly here. Red Star, he's going to push forward. And his AWP is going to be heard. So Magisk knows that the Yard player is already quite oh, aggressive. He's pushed again. the smoke. See you later, Red Star. You're not ready for that, are you, mate? <laughs> he gave his position away, right? He gave it by, by shooting that AWP bullet. Like yeah. Magisk knew that there was like unlikely to be anybody else but in also, that position. His positioning by being so far, like close to main as the smokes bloomed, the timing probably just got a little under Red Star's skin. Didn't understand just how threatened he was so quick. Caught with his knife out on the retreat and another opening kill. Now, we were talking about the 4v5 and 5v4s over on the desk. Fiend at the top of their 5v4 conversions. Astralis, the opposite. The top of 4v5s. Well, this time it's equalized. Bubble has the support of heaven. Oof. Loses his head to Lucky in 20 seconds, boys. This so they want to go down the vent. It could be awkward, and that's what Han's there to punish. Oh, Zipex, that's enough to force the AWPer off. 
Should be seeing someone go down. 10 seconds. Bobski doesn't clear his corner. Dupree suddenly thrust into a 1v3. Gets it down with a second to spare. Zero util for the Dane. Heard two of them here. Yeah, you have to find a first frag quickly. And the crosshair was in the right spot. The trade's not in imminent. Oh, oh, Han. It was so low. Yeah, one bullet out of Dupree's AK and he could have been repositioning. He knew where Dreamer was coming from. So good recovery out of Fiend. Oh, okay, right now. 4v5. Yeah, they're sending Dreamer to go pick up this secondary AWP, right? So he needs to get over there quick smart to pick up Red Star's AWP just so they can continue to run this double AWP setup. Now, it wasn't what brought them into the round, but it was what bowed them out in points. So there you go, scavenged in time. Good communication on that to identify just exactly where it is. Some of the GG slash fan cam to take part in all that action. Get your mug up on the screen. Look, mum, I'm on the telly. But here we go again, Zipex, Mac 10 Bubsky, Galil. We've seen this one before, but it started with Magis getting a lot of space towards Yard. This time they're trying to attack over towards Ramp, and they have to deal with Han, who's over towards the elbow position, backing up towards Hell. Now this one here, if he takes a shot and misses, they can overwhelm that space, but if he hits the first, he could almost lock this down on his own. First found, so the rest is his responsibility, and locking it down as foretold. Forced to retreat. Firing off shots through the wall. We'll try and keep Astralis suppressed. I'll take that low sight. Hubble's already here to receive them, though. And Good molly. Util, they'll hurt him. That just looks maybe the one way. Yeah, maybe not. Just the single tick of the Molotov. A 2v5. Asking a lot of Bubski and Lucky. Nice find from Bubble, not letting this one slip away. And Lucky, the last man to be hunted down. Hiding in plain sight, and just too many men. Too many targets can be different. Well, on one of the AWPs and see if they could take that territory here. But again, it's going to come down to making sure he misses that first shot. And there's two players over towards Ramp here early. Han's going to miss the first, but he will get run on down. They're barreling forward. Oh, he's got the backup of Bubble. Should be good, and only two. Oh! Two for Dupree's Deeg as well, suddenly running out of players. They know where Red Star is. Victor. Oh, we can contest this. It's up to Magis. Has to hit the first one. Oh, Red Star caught them one on one now. Magis, not known to be an author, but still posts it right down to the wire. What a round from Astralis. They came in with just the pissed. Can find connections early. It's unlikely you're finding it in Yard with Astralis' stubborn util usage. You can see the CTs have deployed a smoke of their own. One to the elbow of Zip. Trying to bait Bubble. Oh, Bubble's looking the wrong way. Uh, to bait him and hunt him down. Dupree posting another. Early into this piece, Bubble was again caught on the rotate. Magisk has taken so much space. I can't believe how much space he's gotten, right? Whether it's fast or slow, it's just like Yard's been his absolute playground, right? He's been able to go out there at his own pace whenever he likes. He can bully whatever position on the map. Uh, they've been giving him a lot of respect here, and it doesn't feel like Fiend have too many options right now. He's brute forced his way into the lower site. Fiend have lost two players already. They don't even know where the T's are right now. You can see Dreamer, he's worried about heaven jump ups. He's just trying to tuck himself up. Dupree, but the, the position Dupree opts for. I mean, it's such a hard clear. The timing on this, the timing. <gasps> okay, <laughs> okay. A perfect camera angle to catch just how close that one was. Will they have a voice in a 3v5? Zip's still low, right? He, he's still low, 22 points of health here. So if he gets found, Dreamer's still gonna go and have a look for this one here. As he pushes forward, uh, there has to be a time period when they're in the open. There you go, Dreamer, with another. Zip returns the favor. Victor unable to contribute with that molly down. Still, there's, there's still grounds for Han to ruin their day, but he's not actively holding the site right now. Bomb is being planted and uncontested. Fiend in pursuit of 3v5. He gets the info and the shot quick on the draw. Any more? Are they flirting with the option of saving here? I'm not quite sure what Fiend are thinking here. Victor, if he can find a kill here, if he can at least find some action, it could open the door for Han to push back in. Bomb's halfway tick now. Bobski's taking this fight. Oh, doesn't clear it. Bobski aggressively converts. And Astralis aren't going to win out the T-half here on Nuke. 
What did you make of the Inferno pick? Yeah, it's an interesting one, right? When you just see Astralis and Inferno, it's hard to get it out of my brain, which has been hardwired to think Astralis and Inferno is uh, a map that they're destined to win here. <laughs> I mean, Astralis can do the same thing with Inferno. So if they knew that it was going to be left open, and right, it's a map that they could safely pick on into here. So it's their choice for a reason. We have to wait and see. But I'm not feeling too confident, especially with how this one's kicking off. Ooh. Good dig work out of Victor. Lucky. Ooh, responsible for a quick red star. He surged through the lobby. Bubsky pushing through the smoke does equip red star with an AK and now threatening round. Oh, lobby entrance too. Yeah, they're running out of players here. And oh, that should be it. One back from Fiend. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Gonna be a squeaky smoke coming out from Zip there. He's gonna nade it open as well. And oh, jump spotting. They have seen where red star lies. Bubsky with space. Needs to run him down. Needs to run him down quickly. Red star too quick on the trigger. Uh, he's trying to time his push with those in red, just so that oh. he'd be a sitting duck. Good shooting gallery for Red Star, working on a high score. Oh, 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 oh. Trying to keep track of that Dupree dig. Sense him's quite quick there, isn't he? He's zipping all over once he's scoped on in. Well, here's Zip. He threw his own smoke. He got his way down the bend, and ouch, Victor, on great with here, and finesse their way around the map. And it uh, would be great from Fiend. You know, this could be three on the trot to the half time, two minute break, and they can fire themselves up. Red Star could do exactly that. He's forward and he's down. So Mad just continues his exploration towards this yard position without any resistance whatsoever. And his excellence. Yeah, he's been great. So Dupree's making no secret of his advance in that low sight and definitely trying to be loud about this. And it has drawn Victor to go for a glance. Yard strikes does Magisk. Two man disadvantage. They've recovered one of these before, but it's going to be so tough. Look at the setup. So up the vents is Dupree. Dream is going to have to contend with not only oh, Heaven one, one way, but two of them squeak. Yeah, they're just picking them apart, just peeling them limb from limb. I know where Han is right now, and Bubble's the only man that can get back in the mix here. Well, never mind. Uh, the bubble popped, as they do. And it is just Han here in a one-on-four. What percentage are you giving him, Alex? Seven. Seven percent? Yeah. All right. Six. Six? Okay, <laughs> wow. Halfway tick. I'm going to go three. Yeah, 1.5. One. one. I don't know whether they can't. Well, proving it. I'd say yesterday we they did prove it. Both Definitely of them. So. They both should both be very proud with the performances yesterday. It uh, looks like we're not live here, so we uh, had a little bit of a PC crash, guys. And this is where, uh, well, things get fun because Alex and I, we have to go into our brains that hardly even function. Certainly at the moment. And find something fun to give you all a little bit of a... Well, we can't talk about the game. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, um... tell, I'll tell you what I want to talk about, Chad. All right. I don't, I don't have anything. I just want to see what my brain does. Oh. We aren't ready for our second half. And it's only the first map. Astralis pick nuke. Whoops, excuse me. Inferno Fiend's response. And let's see how far those duelies get. They're definitely looking like they're going to get a test. First up is Bubsky. And wow, swallows that pop flash. Zipex does start to unload. Here we go. Two to the dome. Here we go. Three from the duelies. That's okay. what I want to see. That's the power of the Jewel Barretta's runs. Finally paid off. Oh, phew. All right, well, we'll see that one again in uh, the next six to 12 months, I suppose. Ah, uh, Bubble, you tried, but there was a massive gap in that smoke and lucky plucked you out of the sky. Now this force buy is looking very, very limp. The space not taken. They can turn their attention towards ramp. And guess who's here? The man who just got four kills and he has an org. He should mow them down. Zipex, scoped on in. Shots through and conservative. Doesn't want to hang around for a fight. And that's something big from Red Star trying to solve the mystery. Is Magis gets three with his M4. And Dreamer now, unfortunately, thrust into a dire circumstance. Zip has got him on lock if he does choose to descend. I think even a cheeky elbow has been spotted. So conservative from Zip, right? The ramp anchor position. Yeah. Dreamer. I mean, he's been really diligent, and his crosshair will be in the right place, as will his okay. bullet between the eyes of Zip. Playing this well on the reload. Punished by Bubs. In the hands of Dupree. So things are looking like smooth sailing for Astralis right now, as Fiend will have to take 
one of these more full eco scenarios. And I say full, well, we got three deals, a P250 and a Glock. So far from full, but, uh, oh, they'd have to hit a couple more of those. That is a banger right there from Red Star. All right, well, the Bulgarians, the Deagles work. They certainly do. And Magic is not having any of it. Undaunted by the first Deagle out of Red Star. Now, they are without a single nade. So breaking through the CT forces is going to have to be from, as you said, more like that. Unlikely Astralis will be giving them those kind of jewels. I suspect Crossfire is established. Bubsky for now, though, is isolated. Zipex not with him. He's responsible for that ramp position. Victor continues to show face on towards the silo. And, oh, and down goes Dreamer. They confirm Zip has got ramp on lock. There's no gap. You can see they're just poking and prodding, trying to see if there is any gaps. Turns out Astralis have got everything on lock. Yeah, top was kind of open there, but Bubsky uh, defending from main the whole site. There was a little vent slip possible with Squeaky being an audible sound cue here. He's been able to defend this one, and good stuff from Bubsky, right? For a second. Don't do it. Don't even, don't even. <laughs> oh, I'll come back to that. Oh, Magisk. Mm, I think he spotted him out in the nick of time. Red Star down and on there to keep things competitive. Well, Yard has been halted. Lucky catching them long range on that org. And even the ship damage of that HE softening him up for those M4 headshots. Bubble and Victor vulnerable to that one click of Doom. Do Dupree's taking liberties because he's got the low health and an SMG, so he can go take that space, get that info. He's going to be the probe. He'll drop a pylon towards the spawn. That's StarCraft, right? Yes. I don't know anything else other than Counter-Strike, but I definitely tune into a broadcast here. There are everywhere. I had a phase where I decided I'd try and play StarCraft with some of my old pro mod buddies, and yeah, it's... How'd it go? Just... Not the game for me. Uh, but a lot of micromanaging, huh? So much micromanaging, and I just don't have the attention span. So, like, the only thing I started enjoying was, like, the cheesy, what they were called, like, four racks or something. You just do something to finish the game really quick. Otherwise, I just lost it. I lost focus. The cheese strats, everybody. Yeah. Oh, that, Whereas, that was you awesome. You know, CS, I just get a nice two-minute round, and I can focus on that in its entirety. I've got the attention span of a puppy. Or a fish. Yeah. I don't know if they even really have a attention in general, do they? Personality, absent. Smooth move from Dreamer. He silently dismounts and is getting that bomb down. 1v3. Oh, spotted out. And down he goes. So Astralis, yeah. The guns are out. Both teams have a pretty respectable buy here. More than respectable, we'll call it. They have a full buy. Deep molly towards Yard. That's going to slow any fast plays out. Bubbles actually opted for the Krieg here, so Scopey Boy. Slow approach here. Magisk, on the T side, he's been great at getting as much space as he wants. And on the CT side, he's actually demanding respect. It's a difference maker, right? You, when you saw Magisk taking space, there was no one there to stop him. Now, Magisk, we've already seen it, him just shutting them out almost single-handedly here. Now, Lucky scoped on up towards this ramp position. Let's have a couple of members over towards Lobby and Trophy who are flirting with his area of the map. Yeah, and the way he's placed his crosshair as well enables him to snap into the standard walkout as well as up to that boost. A lot of teams opting to boost a AWPA into that angle. Now, no AWP in play. They've opted for the four rifle strat. The alternative is bubble on the org, and uh, excuse me, org, Krieg, which will enable fights at range. For example, Magisk, but... Hanging out in his blind spot. <laughs> this is really slow again. It is. Bubsky's got a lovely little pop flash just as they wanted to advance. That takes some more time off the clock. Big one from Victor. More required. Damage inflicted. Victor two on, on the entry. Yeah, Dupree's got a lot on his plate. Do Dreamer loses his head and looking for more. 20 seconds, lucky low. Magisk is up there. Hard retake. Yeah, it's up to Han here. And oh, he fluffed it. Why convert issues for Red Star. The 15 HP 1v2. Lucky goes wide. They play that well, but a bit of a slip up from Han. He had the opportunity there. It felt like, like obviously, we had X-ray on there, but it felt like he could see him for days. So uh, you think that should have been his kill, but maybe not being able to see just as much as I thought. The fuse head armor for all of them, and they continue to be competitive at least, but or <laughs> at least have the potential to be competitive. Yeah, well, it remains to be seen how competitive they can be. That's a catch. 
Magisk mollied out of position. Red Star eliminates the orb. Yard is theirs, and Topside might be too. Careful, Dupree, as he moonwalks out of the sky. Oh, How Lordy. did he win that? And there's another in there. They're baiting in. They may not suspect a second. They love this smoke play. Well, they assume it's clear. They're right next to him. Next They're right next to him. Oh, oh Bubsky. Nearly both. Oh, they do love that smoke. Oh, oh. Another one here. That's going to break the bank of Astralis. If Astralis win this, well, this game's on toast. Zipex is into a scout here, so not ideal. Lucky with the org this time round. Doesn't have enough cash to get out the AWP. And, well, now Bubsky's pushing lobby. He's going to hear some of these footsteps right now. And swings on in. Bubsky can't take down Red Star. And Fiend looking good. Okay. So it's a fake from Bubble. It makes it seem like he crossed there, right, with that flash. So he's at least uh, made them question this. Now, nobody has rotated down towards that B bomb site. Everybody's still... Wow, I'm not panicking when someone says could have crossed. Yeah, I guess they can gamble because they're in the number disadvantage here. So if, if it is B, they might just save. But look how detached Lucky is. This isn't going to be easy. Oh, looking for safe haven and from the flames. He's pulled out. Dupree delivers oh, only ouch. one red star. A triple kill in a must-win round. And as discussed, yeah, looking to save. I mean, Lucky was CT already, Zip, just looking to join him. <laughs> with the scout, mind you. Okay. Well, that's rubbish. You don't really love that. It's something here. And now with the loss bonus back on down to what will be 1,900 in the next rounds, a couple more twists of... Twists and tails? Twists and turns. Twists and tails is like a, a piggy kind of vibe. A pi oh, yeah, okay. I'm with you. Yeah, twists and turns left in this one. We've still got a couple more rounds left is oh. uh, basically the gist of it. I just learned something. What did you learn? Well, Bury responded to my toast question that it was the Romans. Um, Romans? They toasted bread to make it last longer. Oh, okay. We just put it in the freezer now. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they had those. <laughs> I suspect. <laughs> I suspect the Romans were quite light on refrigeration. <laughs> and power. Uh, yeah, but they did have plumbing. So shout out to them. And Peter Parker. Peter Parker in the flesh. Just don't offer him any microwavable rice. Couldn't be quicker to that low site. Couldn't yeah. be quicker. I, I think uh, already <laughs> this round's over. Yeah. Uh, the bomb's going to go down. Th there's no way back in. Uh, they still have a bunch of smokes to throw on out here. <laughs> you just see another one drop. Uh, okay, guys, let's, uh, let's save again, shall we? Okay, well... That's the ninth round for Fiend. Now we're starting to get a bit of traction out of them, and that was very, very easy. I think easy is the name of that round. Probably the easiest round we've had the entire game so far. No one's disputing that. Lucky hasn't had to move a muscle for the last 40 seconds, and I suspect Dreamer might have a little look. Oh! It's a rifle to lose there as it well. It is. It's the only one they had, Chad, and it's unretrievable, I would imagine. Bubsky might try and do some parkour. Yeah, they're all going to be desperate. Han's trying to... Han might catch the mid-air here. Oh, he will. <laughs> oh, the security guard's rocked up. Yep, not going to happen today, fellas. It will, but it is the baby orb. And well, if Fiend can continue these quicker plays and get space like they just did. Back in the conversation here, and aggression again. Met with Red Star, the AK. It's getting it done, and they found another opening. This is where they're great at converting. This gets a little <laughs> Real scary. close. Yeah. I mean, 4v5 win percentage. Going to be questioned here. Put up for debate. Zip down early. But this is the thing. They're just going to hit the pause again. Remember, we saw the same thing out of Australis in the first half. Because the CTs, now on Nuke, once this happens, they become desperate for information just so they can hedge their oh, bets. I think you saw him. The barrel surely was spotted yeah, there. It's going to be caught out. Dink exchange. Bubble working at 9 HP, they give Bubbsky a silent, or rather his teammate gives, gets a silent dismount off the rafters. It's kind of cool. Gambling B, I suppose. But if Bubble goes up heaven, he's going to call top site clear. So do we just call it 10 or? Yeah. And these rounds have just come very, very easily for Fiend. And it, it looks easy. Obviously, they've had to do a lot to, to get to this point. But lobby aggression on two rifle rounds, getting dismantled, like just halted, just, okay, you want to push? Well, you're dead, that's fine. We're happy to play the heads up Counter-Strike. And then from there, just playing out the rounds perfectly. So, okay, Dreamer already on the hunt here. And I don't know if Bubsky's going to be ready for this so quick, tucked up in the vent. There's also players coming down through the secret position. So 
Money starting to get in a good place for Fiend now. The Bulgarians can chase. They can try and deny these rifles being carried on through. And as that loss bonus builds, Astralis want to hold on to these for a buy in the next round. Ooh. There you snappy, go. snappy from Bubski. Yeah, well, he's got himself not only an upgraded weapon, but keeps hold of his own. They're throwing more bodies at this. Yeah, understandably so. Lucky. It was unfortunate last time on that orb save, but this time, no different. But on the back foot, we're looking at 14 to 6. Well, now we're looking at a competitive scoreline, and they can build upon this. Going yard, they know they're on light buy, so it's unlikely they need to smoke wall to get themselves across and bang on the money. Dupree's rifle has already put itself in the feed, but it's only the one big nade. Magis playing a very ratty smoke position around Unbreakable, eliminates Red Star, and another weapon falls into Danish hands. Victor with a limp in the warehouse may need team assistance to get him out of there. And the smoke is a first step into achieving that. I just love this angle. Should have a chance. Tames the spray. Oh, and Victor not far away from elimination. Damage inflicted. The staircase saves him. Lucky dropping into the site. Bomb spotted warehouse. How do Astralis react and rotate? About 60 seconds so they can go anywhere they want. Oh, dearie me. After all of those gun rounds. Yeah, that's wild. Uh, now they're up against this resistance and Zip couldn't be more perfectly placed. Crouch key's perfect. Head pops oh. up and Zip oh. deletes it. Whack-a-mole. Yeah, that was a hard one. Not for Zip, clearly. Watch out for your own nade there, Victor. That would have been a real oopsie. Oh, he's kept Zip busy, but we're at 25 seconds right now, and he has to either go back up secret towards main. He'll have to start making noise. Lucky's jiggle peeking this. Smoke it. I think the round, like, how does he win? He can't win this. He can't win this. Can't win There's it. no way he can win this. Uh, definitely not now. It, it, it's just the save. Oh, the worst case would be after time. Lucky may as well hang around for this. He will when he gets him. Look respectable, but maybe Astralis just biding their time to close this one out now. Full guns are here. AWP for Lucky. They've got everything they want for this. Fiend to put up a decent fight to bring this back, but it might all end here. And then we have Inferno coming up next. Their choice. We'll see what they have in store. See what the four days worth of prep time has bought them. While we have a stalling out here within the start of the round, you know, at least the individuals have been on form as far as hitting shots, right? I don't think Fiend's individual performance has been shabby. Now just being cheeky there with a little vent angle into lobby and a follow-up of a smoke here. So playing as a team are Astralis. More smoke's about the minute mark coming out from Fiend, and it doesn't look like they want to follow through with these. This is just to force that CT side rotation, and right now nobody has moved towards the lower side. If anything, they're actually pushing. Zip's close towards ramp, I do believe. And they're setting up for a top pop. Oh, he's boosted. Okay, that just shows you how close he is. Bubsky's in the unmolliable position, or unlikely to be Molotov's at least. Ah, drops in. So, caught in limbo at this point in time. The frags have come in. Oh, two for Dupree. Locking down the lobby push. Bubble desperate to avenge his fallen teammates, but chipped away at losing bodies. The flank coming in. And